Hello, this is Angela with Parker's Permaculture. I am sitting in the front yard of my Portland, Oregon permaculture food forest. First off, I just want to say thank you to the new folks who have begun sponsoring this channel through Patreon. It makes a really significant difference for me and my family and I'm really really grateful for the folks who are able to contribute on a monthly basis so thank you so much to all of my patrons. Now I did a video a while ago on making cattle panel arch trellises. I made one in my front yard and showed you all how I did it and then I made one in my backyard uh, and I thought I would give you an update on the functionality of those on whether they've been a success or not, the ups and downs and some things that I would tweak. So let me flip the camera around and I will show you how it's going so far using cattle panel arches to trellis perennial and annual plants in my garden. So to provide a little context for the location of this first cattle panel arch that I put in while we are serenaded by my neighbor's rooster, this is the purple robe locust that I pollarded earlier in the summer, both for biomass and to help it um, contribute nitrogen to the garden and also to let some more sunshine in and also because I have to control this tree or it will get far too large for the space. Eventually it will be cycled out and this pawpaw will be the dominant canopy tree in this area along with this pawpaw. They are right now a sub canopy layer but eventually they'll get big enough to form the canopy. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with uh, what has happened in the West Coast this summer, we had an absolutely brutal heat wave and this plant did get some sunburn. So if you see some brown and yellow spots, that's what's going on with that pawpaw. So that's the context for this arch. I put it in here because you walk through carefully through the pumpkins and persimmon, walk through here. I put in this arch because I had these goji berries and I saw a quick blurb on uh, Plant Abundance had a video about an entirely different subject, but he had a quick mention of his arch trellis and how he really liked it for his goji berries. And I thought, well, my goji berries are getting bigger and healthier every year. They're in a sheltered location here along my neighbor's hedge but they do tend to flop over and they tend to tip root. So anywhere this hits the ground, it can form a whole new plant. And that means you end up with a walking patch of goji berry and wolf berry. I have both here, a goji here and a wolf berry here. They are both in the same genus, but different species. So you can see they're very, very happy. I'm really, really glad that I trained them up over this cattle panel trellis. You can see they do a really good job of on their own, leaning up against the trellis. I don't have to tie them up or anything. Occasionally I do come in and weave some up back through to get them growing up this way instead of coming into the middle too much, but I don't have to do very much. And I'm going to have another bumper crop of gojis this year. Look at all these green gojis. So that part of the trellis is a real success. Now I made a boo-boo when I installed this because I've never done a cattle panel trellis before. Oh, let's take a look at this bumble first. I've said before bumblebees really, really like any of these Solanaceae. Hey, up there she goes. Okay. So when I first put the arch in, I wasn't really paying attention and I didn't realize my mistake until after. The way that this uh, works, the tension of the arch is pushing out, right? And so I needed to put my uh, cattle panel on the inside of this T-post here. So when you're installing it, realize that this is a mistake. I did not repeat it in the backyard, but the tension is pushing out this way and I want it to be pushing against my T-post, not pulling away from it. So think about installing yours on the inside of your T-post. Now, I looked for some added bonuses here, not only to control my goji berry, but I'm always using the permaculture principle of stacking functions, and I wanna get as many gains out of this, oh, about $45 investment as I possibly can. So, I trellised pumpkins up the other side. Burgess Buttercup, the best, the best winter squash you can grow. Very, very happy on this trellis right here. I also have started American groundnut up this trellis as well. So I'm getting the support here for an annual crop of squash, two perennial crops, goji berries and American groundnut. 
And then I'm also getting support for a third perennial crop, and that is tree collards. Now it's difficult to see, I have another young cutting over here, but all along here is going to be a row of tree collards. This is the largest one, eventually the others will catch up. Tree collards, when they get very large, get kind of leggy and they can flop over and they really need support. So my idea here was that the annual squash would grow up this side and along the outside, I would be able to stake and attach with string the tree collards so that they are fully supported as well. So I get three supports for three different crops out of one trellis. I also get a clear path for me to use instead of a path in which I get entangled in goji berries. So I'm very, very happy with this. Now let's go look at the one in my backyard. So here's the second trellis that I put in. It's in my annual veg patch. Now, this used to be much more of a formal area and I've kind of let it get wild and do its thing. I try and let the garden speak to me about its needs and take it where it wants to go and kind of just be a, a facilitator. So one thing I noticed in the past few years is that I grow a ton of winter squash. We eat huge amounts. I love winter squash. Such a great, nutritious, highly caloric crop. And I found that they were kind of smothering some of my other plants. So I thought, you know what, let's put an arch in here. Not only were they smothering other plants, they were consuming the path and it made it hard to get down into the chicken run. So I put this arch in here. Let me come down and show you. And I thought I'll grow pole beans up one half and winter squash up the other half. So coming in here, you can see the Oregon sweet meat squash doing very, very well. Huge, huge squash, very happy. If you want to grow sweet meat, it is a great keeper winter squash, but the vines are very vigorous. So it is ideal for going up a trellis. Now every day or so, I come in here and I make sure that I hook the vines so that they want to go up the trellis and not down through my tomato here. Very, very happy with this. It has kept a really nice clear path. Now I have had to do chop and drop to get rid of, of uh, excess nasturtium and a forage that want to volunteer in here. Oh, look at this blue jay feather. That's cool, keep that. And uh, I find that there is a sufficient amount of light in here to grow some understory crops as well. So I've had ground cover nasturtium. I have kale growing underneath and there's plenty of room. So you can see, I always grow flowers intertwined with my veggies, increase pollination, increase forage for pollinators, but my runner beans here are now in flower. I have some gaps because I used very, very old seed and so I didn't get as good a germination as I wanted, but that's okay because I threw in a few extra delicata squash and my hope is that as they come up here, I will train them to fill in the holes almost there. We'll get there in a week or so. That'll be up and over these holes, but quite happy. Now, runner beans need a very tall trellis, so they will likely cover the entire top before the end of summer and be competing with the sweet meat squash, which also will just scramble everywhere. But this is a really nice functional trellis. Very, very happy with it not very expensive and back up here you can see it really provides a nice vignette in the garden some vertical height more green and it really increases my growing space so that i'm able to grow those vining plants without having them smother some of my lower annual veggies so this cattle panel arch system is one that I would recommend to anybody. It was very easy to install. The most difficult part was getting it home from the farm store, but really quite an easy installation and a low financial output, about $45. Great for growing big, heavy annuals. Great for growing perennials over it. Super, super pleased with how this turned out. So thanks for watching. If you got something out of this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can check out my Patreon in the description, or if you aren't interested in being a regular monthly contributor, you can throw a couple of bucks at my PayPal. That's also awesome, and I really, really appreciate it. 
If there are ideas that you have that you want me to cover on permaculture gardening and sustainable living, please drop them in the comments. I keep a running list in my phone of everybody's suggestions and I have made several videos based on viewer suggestions in the past. So thank you all for the inspiration and I absolutely will read all of the comments. I'll be back soon, thanks.